Good morning. Please join me in the responsive call to worship from Psalm 22. I will declare your name to my brothers and sisters. All of you who revere the Lord, praise him. I fu will fulfill my promises in the presence of those who honor God. Let all who seek the Lord praise him. Heavenly Father, thank you for that great gospel reminder that as we gather together, your Holy Spirit is right here to uplift and encourage us, to guide and strengthen us. And so, Father, help us to breathe deep of that presence, that we would worship you in spirit and in truth for your glory. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.
He left our voices. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Your soul is filled with glory. Amen? Amen? So let's share these words this morning, remembering that day when Jesus came down to us. children to do this so instead i'm going to demand that people who are artistic and want to participate raise your hand right now yeah i know you're doing it you weren't going to get an option take one one crown i don't care if you look this isn't that competitive yeah Jean, you're doing it oh yeah cindy Oh, you're you're super artistic. I've seen your amazing art in the past. Okay. 
Gene hobbled up there. Way to go, Gene. Okay. So what we're going to do, we all have just one crown. I knew what we were going to draw, though, so I'll pick the right color. I want you to draw a tree. Okay? So draw a tree on that paper, as big as you can draw. I'm going to draw a, a, a tree, and you guys ignore me as I'm talking. What, if I'm drawing a tree, what should I start with? The trunk. I agree. The roots. Somebody said the roots. <laughs> I was just going to do this for the root system, you know, the ground. Because I've, in my whole life of coloring trees, never once drew roots to it. So, so do the trunk, and then after I do the trunk, what, what should I do? The branches. Would it depend on what type of tree I'm drawing? So what type of tree am I going to draw? A maple tree. You guys are really specific. When I was growing up, I had terrible eyesight and didn't know it. Um, so I'm going to draw trees exactly the way I saw them as a child. Which means it is a deciduous tree, right? Fancy learning words here. And, and I like fruit, so I'm going to put little fruit in my tree. And even though they are green, I prefer orange trees. So, okay, are you guys done? Okay, come on up here so that everyone can admire your artwork. Too. But, uh, uh, show the people near you as you're coming up, Gene, Audrey. Make sure they are impressed with your artwork. This is the tree. You guys help me. Help me draw. It's good. That's good, Gene. Man, some of them have really good details in there. Am I the only one that has no leaves on my trees? Yes. D has a winter deciduous tree. Did anyone make an evergreen? I bet you if it was near Christmas time, one of us would choose to do an evergreen. So if you look at, at these trees, they all look fairly different, right? They're different colors. They present different seasons. And sometimes, sometimes I feel like in faith, um, we look at all these differences and we forget that there's one really unifying part to these pictures, isn't it? which is every one of these points to what? A tree. They all represent a tree. And I'm, I'm going to talk about the unity of the church, and I'm not saying that we're all going to look the same, right? I, I don't think that unity has anything to do with what color the tree was, what shape it is. Our unity is found in one simple thing, and that's Jesus Christ. That's what I want the children to understand. That's what I want us as adults to understand. Because in the midst of all of our differences, it's that unity uh, that draws us together. So even though my tree of course is, is the not the best. No, I... <laughs> yeah, she has a hole for the owl. So I'm going to go with Cindy's tree. A squirrel. 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 Squirrels live in... She doesn't even know where squirrels live, so I'm disqualifying her now. <laughs> well, before you guys sit down, um, let's pray. Father, thank you that even though, um, even though we express the message differently, it is the same message, Father, that, uh, that your Son is our Lord and Savior. And Father, help that unifying message to, to draw us ever closer together so that we can present this beautiful image of your grace and your presence to this world, all for your glory. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, awesome job. You guys, I, the children are going to have a hard time competing with this. 
Audrey, I didn't say you could keep your picture. <laughs> we're hanging these up. Names. Yeah, we're putting names on them. <laughs> going to do a poll. Are there any joys or concerns in the congregation this morning? For Nancy, who was in a bad um, car accident. For Mike, who's diagnosed with uh, lung <coughs> with lung cancer, and it's uh, inoperable, so we have to pray that the um, chemo will shrink it. Continue to pray for the Seacrest family. Um, the service was yesterday. And it really was a, a great reminder that we, we have tremendous hope uh, that Don's in a much better place than we are. Amen. His trees look better than this. For Pat, who was... <laughs> who is ill today, and uh, for Rachel, who uh, was also in a bad car accident. It is a, a privilege to be able to continue the food box uh, distribution, and we're grateful for those who volunteer. It's, especially yesterday, it's so much harder when it's freezing cold outside. And for Christy, who is diagnosed with liver cancer. Let's pray and remember it's not just my time before God, it's all of our time, so feel free as you to pray as you feel led. But I just remembered, um, today is Girl Scout Sunday. Shockingly, um, the Girl Scouts did not think they would have girls that wanted to show up at 8 a.m., um, so they will not be present with us in this service. But I thought it was important because, uh, man, two and a half years ago, uh, they got kind of removed from where they were meeting and uh, we welcome them as a church council. We welcome them to our body. And I always forget uh, that they're here. But every Thursday, we have a Girl Scout troop who's been um, meeting up in our fellowship hall. So we want to support them um, with our prayers. And we're grateful for the way uh, they are leading these young uh, ladies um, to grow up into young women. And so uh, let's not forget to pray for the, uh, the troop that is meeting here. I tried to memorize the troop number. Did you know Girl Scout troop numbers have like six numbers in it? So you know what I've memorized? That they meet here. So the Ono Church uh, Girl Scout. So would you pray with me? Father, may we always always come in awe of your presence. Of that that powerful realization that as we gather together, your Holy Spirit is right here. Father, that no matter what life has brought us to or through, that you desire meet with us this morning, to uplift and encourage us, to guide and strengthen us. And so, Father, help us to breathe deep of that presence. 
that we would be your faithful children in everything we do and all for your glory. Father, we lift up to you all those who are close to our hearts, who feel separated from you. Father, we ask that you could soften their hearts, place people in their lives to proclaim that gospel message, to remind them, Father, that you desire to call them your holy and beloved child, and we lift them up before you now. Father, for all those who are close to our hearts that need your healing presence. Father, we ask that you could restore their bodies to full health for your glory, and we lift them up before you now. Father, for all those who are battling cancer, especially, Father, this morning for Mike and for Christy, that you could remove the cancer from their bodies, that you could restore them to full health for your glory. Father, for Pat, as she's home, uh, not feeling well, that your healing presence would uplift and strengthen. Father, for Nancy and Rachel, we are grateful uh, that you kept them safe throughout the car accident. We ask that you continue to guide, lead, and uplift them. Father, thank you for the, the life that you'd given to Don, for that opportunity we had um, yesterday to proclaim that gospel message, to remind everyone uh, that we are grateful for his presence with you and that that promise extends to us through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for the opportunity we have to help uh, those in our community that need help. Thank you for the, the numerous volunteers from the different Northern Lebanon uh, United Methodist churches, and we ask that you would bless each one of those people who received a box, Father, that would not just provide nourishment for their body, but nourishment for their soul. Father, thank you for all the leaders who, who serve the Girl Scout troop here. Thank you for the young women um, under their charge, and we just ask that you would bless that group, that you would continue to guide, lead, and direct them, that they would lead these young women to be the, the godly women you desire them to be for your glory. And Father, we lift up to you the leaders of our congregation, of our community, of our state, of our country, and of this world that you would give them hearts for you and you alone, that they would seek your righteousness, your justice, and your peace here on earth, all for your glory. And Father, we lift ourselves before you, that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us, that we would be faithful disciples of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we would see that day, Father, when every knee would bow and every tongue would confess that you are Lord. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. morning. We're going to be uh, looking at the verses, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 16, and it's titled, The Unity in the Body of Christ. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. 
Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But in each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. What does he ascend it? mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions. He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fulfillment of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Now may we pray for the offerings. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come to you today, we thank you for this time, this blessing to be in your presence. And we pray that as we are here, we might be mindful of those needs that are round about us. And we pray that you will uplift them and guide them and direct them, that they might be fulfilled and that we might in one unity bring glory to you, and we pray for the offerings that are given to us. May they be used in a supportive way. In Jesus' name, amen. Just a reminder, today's our last day for our Blessings of Hope offering. Uh, Any gifts you wish to contribute toward that can be in the soup pot. Um, back there that's marked Blessings of Hope. And then I do hope you'll plan on joining us tonight for our uh, Empty Bowl Soup Dinner, um, where we'll be having a soup buffet of lovely soups and homemade bread. Uh, One of our members is making homemade bread for tonight. Um, But more importantly, uh, just a chance for us uh, to learn more about this organization of Blessings of Hope. There'll be a gentleman here to talk to us about their ministry. Um, And like we've said before, this has been instrumental, this Blessings of Hope, in our food distribution to our community. So uh, we're excited to have uh, welcome them tonight uh, into the Fellowship Hall at 6 o'clock. And just a reminder, as we journey through Lent, we're encouraging everyone to be prayerful about who is your one. Invite your one uh, to be a part of worship with us. There are invitations in the back that you can uh, put in someone's hands, but more importantly... Who's God put on your heart to share Christ with? And uh, when he does that, are we being bold enough and are we feeling that urgency to share our faith with others? So continue to encourage you in that. Uh, Let's stand together as we continue in worship. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place.
may be seated. <laughs> you can talk to her after church. So we've been looking at this idea that, you know, everything in life really is truly connected. And um, part of our struggle is when those connections are broken or not healthy, uh, it makes life difficult too. And so it starts with this connection we have to God that uh, we talk about having our hearts for God, but we, we don't mean our hearts. We mean the essence of who we are needs to be connected to God for the rest of our connections to truly be healthy. Part of that connection is us looking at ourselves and recognizing that we were made in God's image. This great concept that each one of us carries the image of God within us. That together we are connected as the body of Christ and how important that connection is for all the other connections. But inside the body of Christ, we also recognize we are within this community, that we have been called to serve and to do things within this particular location. And as all these connections weave together, we are building this, this beautiful tapestry of what life should look like. That is, that is our hope, is by the time we are done with the year 2023, we can say within our DNA, within the essence of who we are as a body of Christ, as healthy connections to empower and help us to be better people of faith. My wife just pointed out to me that apparently exactly one month ago, I used the exact same scripture uh, as I did this morning with Ephesians, which means... It's important because I don't look at what I picked in the past. I just look at what it is. I, I love, I love Paul's reminder to the church how important it is for us to be united. We live in a world uh, that really struggles to be united. Amen? If you come from a family that is more than an only child, you probably recognize that sometimes in your own family... It's pretty tough to be united, amen? And sometimes I feel like the church is perfectly okay saying that we are biblical and we are not united. And I'm going to say, because of Ephesians, because of Romans 12, because of 1 Corinthians 12, and because of what I'm going to read in Colossians, if we take the Bible seriously, being united is truly important important to what God expects of his church. This is Paul's letter to the Colossians, the third chapter, beginning the first verse. So if you're serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act like it. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorbed with the things right in front of you. Look up. And be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. See things from his perspective. Your old life is dead. Your new life, which is your real life, even though invisible to spectators, is with Christ and God. He is your life. When Christ, your real life, remember, shows up again on this earth, you'll show up too. The real you the glorious you. Meanwhile, be content with obscurity like Christ. And that means killing off everything connected with that way of death, sexual promiscuity, impurity, lust, doing whatever you feel like whenever you feel like it, and grabbing whatever attracts your fancy. That's a life shaped by things and feelings instead of by God. It's because of this kind of things that God is about to explode in anger. It wasn't long ago that you were doing all that stuff and not knowing any better. But you know better now. So make sure it's all gone for good. Bad temper, irritability, meanness, profanity, dirty talk. Don't lie to one another. You're done with that old life. It's like a filthy set of ill-fitting clothes you've stripped off and put in the fire. 
changed. Now you're dressed in a new wardrobe. Every item of your new way of life is custom made by the creator with his label on it. All the old fashions are now obsolete. Words like Jewish and non-Jewish, religious and irreligious, insider and outsider, uncivilized and uncouth, slave and free mean nothing. From now on, everyone is defined by Christ. Everyone is included in Christ. So chosen by God for this new life of love, dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline. Be even-tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive an offense, Forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you. And regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic all-purpose garment. Never be without it. Let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other and step with each other. None of this is going off and doing your own thing. And cultivate thankfulness. Let the word of Christ, the message, have the run of the house. Give it plenty of room in your lives. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense. And sing. Sing your hearts out to God. Let every detail in your lives, words, actions, whatever, be done in the name of the Master Jesus, thanking God the Father every step of the way. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you for that that great promise that you give us new clothes. Father, that we can put the love and the grace and the presence of your son, Jesus Christ, on. And so, Father, help us to dress in you this morning. That will be your words that are proclaimed and heard for your glory. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Division, Division isn't new. Uh, sometimes when, when people read the Bible, I think they th- think that the stories are all saying this is what God wants or expects in life. But I, I would say, one, the Bible's a really complicated book. And one of the things it points out time and time again is the stark realization that we as people fail God. And it begins in the very beginning. The first story we have about humanity outside of the Garden of Eden is one about Cain and Abel. You know that story, right? It's a story we're familiar with. It's a story about brothers who you would think would love and embrace one another, but instead jealousy creeps into the relationship. The relationship becomes so broken, so disjointed, that Cain is going to kill Abel. Not only does he he kill Abel, but when God calls him the task on it, he says, am I my brother's keeper? As though he doesn't bear responsibility for the brokenness of the relationship. But the story of broken relationship, the story of disunity doesn't end with Cain and Abel. Abraham is the father of faith. And in the story of the father of faith, there is yet another story about siblings who are disjointed. And this story has impacted the world for thousands of years. Arabic people claim their lineage from Ishmael. And Jewish people claim their lineage from Isaac. And there is still animosity between those groups because of Abraham's inability to truly live out a life that unified his family. Because Abraham allowed the disjointedness of his own desires and his own inability to truly follow God to disrupt that unity. But in this really awesome story of the father of faith, You don't look far before you realize there's more siblings who can't figure out how to live well together. 
Jacob and Esau. You know Jacob, right? Jacob's name is going to become Israel. And yet, he deceives his brother. He deceives his father. There is animosity between him and his brother to the point when he runs away out of fear that his brother would kill him. And when he returns 14 years later, he still deceives his brother out of fear that his brother might kill him. See, if we look at the human story, we see time and time again this unity. It shouldn't shock us. Joseph puts himself above his brothers, not because Joseph thought that's what was going to happen. That's what God showed him it was going to happen. Did his brothers rejoice at what God was going to do for Joseph? Nope. They threaten to kill him and they sell him into slavery. I think some of my older siblings would have taken that option if that was available to them. And yet God used their inability to truly connect. And the story of Joseph has a really fascinating ending. Because the brothers are worried. The brothers are worried that all they've done to hurt Joseph is now going to create the anger and animosity in Joseph that they rightfully deserve. But do you know what Joseph says to them? What you intended for evil, God intended for good. In essence, I forgive you because you, you were just pawns in God's game. That God did all this so that we could be united as a family when it mattered most. When people ask me why we struggle as a church to be truly united, you know why we struggle? We're human. And this is a part of the human condition. Is that we really like to figure out What's different? If we show those pictures of the, the trees to people, most people, when they describe it, would point out that they're different colors, they're different types of trees, and all the differences that are in there, and they would lose sight of the one thing that really mattered, which is there was one instruction, right? Draw a tree. And yet everyone focuses on those things that separates and hinders us. I think scripture is painfully clear as to why we do this. James is going to say that you do this because you have your own desires. And when your own desires don't get met, you get upset at everyone else. And so when the church votes in a way that I don't agree with, you know what I do? I get upset. And I tell everyone that that church no longer follows Jesus Christ. And then I go find myself a new church. We live in a country that time after time after time saw churches split over some really interesting issues. I went to seminary with a kid who was in a denomination, a very small denomination in Indiana, and they split over three-part versus four-part harmony. And he was proud of it. And the first thing I thought is, I'm not sure I can identify the difference between three-part and four-part harmony. And I'm not sure how you can read the Bible seriously and not think it's important for us to figure this out. Because if we just split every time we disagree, what are we going to look like? The whole rest of the world. This is what the world does. The world, every time we disagree, simply walks away from each other and decides, well, I'm going to be in this group and I'm going to stay here. And here's the problem with that. If we're going to tell the world that we have an answer for them, 
we should not look like the world, amen? And so I want to say to the world, there's a solution to this. That when Christ went to that cross, he went to reconcile people. He went to redeem. He took that which people intended as evil, as Joseph would say, and used it as God's tool to bring about unity. Why is that such a unifying moment? Well, the bottom line is every single one of us needs grace. None of us can stand over one of the others and say, you are more in need of grace than I am. And because we all need grace, we are unified by the one person who can offer us grace that grace. And then Paul's going to remind the church that if it is one person who offers us grace, he gives us one Holy Spirit. He makes us one body of Christ. All of this is unified. Realize Paul comes from a tradition and a history that separated the world. He would have said for his whole life before Christ, he would have said you are either Jewish or you are not Jewish. He was trained theologically to understand you were either Jewish or not Jewish. And if you were Jewish and you were hurting the Jewish faith, you know what your, his role was? To kill you so you could no longer hurt the Jewish faith. That same man later writes, there is no longer Jew nor Gentile in Jesus Christ. The unity comes because of who Jesus Christ is. Unity takes, as Paul writes, humility. Because humility says to the church, I'm not always going to agree with some of the decisions that we make. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to honor and love those decisions because I'm a part of this unified body that takes humility amen this or saint augustine never wanted to become bishop he didn't want to become bishop because he didn't agree a hundred percent with the laws and the rules of the church and they kept asking him to be bishop he's one of the great saints and theologians of the church and he said no until finally he realized this was god's role in his life And from that point on, he never wrote anything that was in opposition to the church. He humbly accepted, it is my role to support and love the church, even if I don't fully agree with it. That's a humble position, amen? A willingness to say, I'm going to yield to what is best for the body. Think of how the world would look at the church if instead of looking at us as a whole bunch of different people, they looked at us as all people who proclaim the same message. Because here's the truth. All the different denominations that are out there, we're just different looking trees. If you ask any pastor, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Catholic, Methodist, are you saved by the grace of Jesus Christ? What are they going to say? Yes. If you ask them, do you believe the Holy Spirit works in the lives of the people around you, you know what they're going to say? Yes. If you ask them, is there one body of Christ, you know what they're going to say? Yes. And that unity is what we should be professing to the world. There's this very bizarre movie uh, called The Apostle with Robert Duvall. And he is, uh, I'm I'm not going to recommend the movie, by the way. So if you go watch it, don't send me an email saying that was a terrible movie. I'm agreeing with you. But there's a scene in it that I love because he's on a bridge or on the bank of a river watching a priest over a bridge, blessing the boats with water. And he says, you do it your way, I do it mine. 
but we get the job done. And that's the unity, the unity in the body of Christ we need to seek as a big body and then as Ono United Methodist Church, the trust we should have on each other that God leads us as our body and we are unified in that. So when I talk about church unity, I always want to stay rooted in the idea that we all need the same grace from the same Jesus who provides the same Holy Spirit. Amen? If that is true, that's going to unite us no matter what else we disagree with. Amen? (laughs) Because I recognize I might not always be right. I'm grateful that God's grace is there. I recognize you might not always be right, but guess what? God's grace is there for you as well. I recognize that I might think you have faults and failures that God has to deal with, but you know who that's between? You and God. And I recognize that the faults I have are between me and God. And it's the same presence that I trust with you, that I trust within me. This is going to blow your mind, but it is not your job to judge each other. In Romans 14, Paul says, it is up to one person's Lord to judge that person. Am I your Lord? No. Are you each other's Lords? No. Who do we trust to be the judge? Jesus Christ. And so it's okay. It's okay for us not to necessarily see eye to eye on everything because my role, my job is not to sit here and to judge you. (coughs) Sometimes we forget it is Jesus' prayer that we will be united as he is with the Father. In, In the Gospel of John, the 17th chapter, it's the longest recorded prayer of Jesus Toward the end of that prayer, the longest section is for people who will come later. It's not for the people who are present on earth at that time. He says, I pray for those who will come next, that they will be united. They will be of one presence as I am one with the Father. Do you think we should take being united seriously? Yes. We should take it seriously because scripture tells us this is important stuff for us because Jesus' desire is that we will be united. Doesn't mean I think we're all going to look the same. Doesn't mean that I think we're all going to proclaim the message the exact same way. It doesn't mean that we were all given the same gifts. If anything, it is a recognition that Each one of those expressions of God's love speaks to somebody else. Amen? Because if I were to poll you, which one is the best tree up here, do you think any of them would have won unanimously? Because they all spoke to you differently. And that's okay. If I want to reach out the world, I need to be able to speak differently to all people. And I can only do that with your help, amen? Because you're going to reach people in a different way than I can reach people. And that's okay. Because the message remains united. Jesus Christ died on the cross to reconcile all people to him. That Jesus' love has to clothe who we are. I love how Eugene Peterson puts that uh, in the message. That's your basic garment. Above all the other things you clothe yourself with, that's the simplest one, and it works in all situations. Amen? So let's be unified. Let's share that united message to the world and remind everyone we serve the same Lord. We have the same Holy Spirit. And that we are united in our desire for all people to know who Jesus Christ is. Would you pray with me? Father, in those times when, oh man, when it's just so easy to see how we are different. For those times in which we allow those 
those feelings to disrupt our unity. Father, thank you that your love and your grace remain steadfast. Thank you that you are still the same Lord of us all. That you offer us all the same Holy Spirit. And so, Father, as we close in worship this morning, may your Holy Spirit move mightily in our midst, draw us ever closer to one another so we can proclaim that gospel message in profound unity that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Father, move in our hearts, our minds, and our lives so we can better reflect you for your glory. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together as we close this morning. Blessed be the tie that binds. As God's holy and beloved children, redeemed by his grace, filled with his presence, go forward to serve him, known the God of love, the God of grace, and the God of joy goes with you always. Amen. Lord.